Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 190, uno nueve zero. How you doing? How you feeling, motherfuckers? Welcome back, it's another week, another week and here I am back again in a hot seat talking to you lovely people, hope you're well wherever you may be. Um, it's been a bit of a break for me, right? Um, I haven't podcasted since last week. Um, I had a bit of a dodgy weekend. I ended up eating something that didn't agree with my stomach. And I was ill for most of the weekend. Hence why I didn't record anything on Monday, Tuesday. But I'm recording something today. Uh, stomach bugs always are one of those kind of um, blah, 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 annoying things, aren't they? Right? Stomach bugs, stomach bugs, stomach bugs. You can never quite identify exactly what it was that you ate that actually fucked you over. It could be the entire dish. It could be an ingredient. It could be the way it was cooked. It could be because it was out of date. It could be because somebody had touched it, you know, was scratching their balls 10 minutes late, 10 minutes before they handed you the plate and you didn't see it. It could be because you didn't wash your own hands. There's loads of extenuating circumstances that lead to you essentially shitting out of every orifice in your fucking body. But what the one thing you can't deny is the pain. One thing you can't deny is how uncomfortable it feels. And one thing you can't deny is the fact that you just want it to be over. And I just, I've always maintained, um, um, you know, pains or ailments that happen within, inside your body, things that you can't actually see to the naked eye, are always a lot more, um, always, end up, always end up hurting a lot more than um, things that you see on the outside, right? If you, I always say, if you used to get like a massive gash on your arm, if you used to cut up, if you used to cut your face, break your arm, fracture something, I know you fracture something, but you know, you know what I mean? Like break something, dislocate, have a big wound. You can see it, right? And you can sort of will your body into not freaking out. Like, okay, cool. I've got this huge gash in my hand. Oh my God, oh my God. It's crazy. But you can sort of will yourself to like not get too hysterical about it, right? And not be too crazy and not be all in your own pain and crying and shit. But honestly, the only times I've cried when I've been ill, no, the only times I've cried is when I've been ill. Like legitimately, like when you've had those kind of splitting headaches that, you know, you just feel like somebody's smashing over the head with a baseball bat. Those are the times when I've cried because you can't see it. It's just something that's occurring inside and no one can no one can really help you. No amount of aspirin, no amount of throwing up, no amount of glasses of water. That's the first thing everyone says to you. Drink water, drink water as if it's some magic fucking potion, you know, mineral water. No, it's not. Do you know what I mean? I've got this sulfuric acid that's, you know, that's, you know projectiling itself through my esophagus. And hurling its way out of my mouth into the fucking into the into the into the loo, right? And even then, sometimes because you're just such in so pain, you sometimes just blow it out and it just spills all over the place. I know it's disgusting. I hope you guys aren't eating anything. So if you are, please skip ahead. But god damn it, man, not the best thing in the world. But anyway, um, here I am, much healthier than I was before. So healthy that I went out for a run this morning. I did a little three mile run in the run up to my um, half marathon next week, which is going to be a little bit difficult because I haven't bought my trainers yet. I meant to buy them this Friday when I get paid, which is a bit of a stretch because that means I'm going to have to try and run in those trainers for a week before I then end up having to run a half mile in them. I mean, half marathon, which is a real risky proposition. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure how I'm going to make it work, but fingers crossed and pray for me in that regard. Um, what else do I have to tell you today? And that's it, really. Isn't it? Yeah, training a lot, running a lot. Um, so much so that I've lost a lot of weight, actually. I'm, at, I'm down to 224. So I've only got four more pounds until I get underneath 220. Or just, you know, my goal is to hit 220 before the race, which is fucking awesome, which means, you know, I've lost essentially 10 pounds before the race. Again, it's not. It's not my max. It's not the race. It's not the way I'd want to be at for a half marathon. I'd want to be at least two ten, right, or two fifteen at the at the heaviest. But you know, uh, beggars can't be choosers. But so far, it's going pretty well. Um, again, like I mentioned previously, I really, really, really encourage you guys to use um the app Zero. I use it all the time. This isn't an ad. This isn't a sponsor or anything. But this app called Zero, I use it to fast, and it's fucking amazing. Hold on, I can see it to the screen there. Can you see that? Can you see that? No, you can't probably see that, can you? No, can you see that one? Can you see that one? No, no. Yeah, can you see that? There you go. A little bit there. It's an app called Zero. It's bloody amazing. I love it. I use it all the time. One of my favorite apps. And again, I highly, highly recommend it if you're looking, if you're wanting to, you know, lose some weight, but do it the healthy way. So essentially what you do is they've, they've got different kind of ways of, of fasting. They've got the, um, they've got the option for you to fast uh, 16 hours a day. Right, yeah, 16 hours a day, but then have an eight hour window. So essentially what you do 
is that whenever you have your last meal during the day, hopefully you have it before 6 p.m. Like just have, just keep general rules in, in place, right? Uh, try to limit your amount of carbs, eat loads of vegetables, um, you know, some protein, complex carbohydrates are probably good for you. Stay away from anything white. Like just a general kind of, you know, stay away from um, sugar, don't drink fruit juices, drink a lot of water, blah, blah, blah. The standard things that we all know. And then essentially what you do is that you try and eat within an eight hour window. So you have eight hours. Usually I like to eat between the hours of like eight and eight and three p.m. I'd say is when I like to usually have my main meals. Right, I have like a breakfast and a, a huge, a big breakfast. I have like a pretty big lunch, and that that would be it. I don't really have dinner for the most part. Um, if I do have dinner, then I'll just have that at four or five, the latest. Then whenever you have your last meal, you log onto the app. You just simply press the screen, say start fast, and it starts. Um, it starts basically calculating the amount of time that you until you eat next. So it'll be the next morning. So 16 hours from then on. And again, in my opinion, I think it's the best way to lose weight. It's the best way to keep healthy. And I think in times when you don't really need to eat as much, especially maybe when it's hot and it's summertime now, it's not so much so in, in London, plopping, you know, looking out the window here and it's raining. It looks fucking horrible outside. But usually in the summer, I tend to, I tend not to eat that much because I'm usually running around. It's usually quite warm. Last thing you want to do is keep eating like hot food. You don't want to be sweating and shit. So it works pretty well in the summer. In the winter, it's probably going to be a little bit difficult because, you know, for the most of people like to eat a lot more in the winter because you're usually indoors a lot more. You're usually stationary, you're not moving around as much. But again, I think building up these habits now is probably going to lead to um, good habits in the future. But essentially, again, it makes, um, it stops me from having any sort of mental fatigue. I don't need to be um, always worrying about what I'm going to eat. It kind of frees up my day. I know exactly what I'm eating, when I'm eating it. Um, and you just, I don't know, you just start to appreciate things a lot more. You have a lot more time. I don't have to describe it. It's just, again, I think for me, I, I come from a different place because I don't necessarily have a reverence for food. I'm not like a big foodie kind of person. Um, I like to go to restaurants. I like to review restaurants. So my blog, I've done that plenty of times, as you can see. Check it out, defaultgoon.com. There's a tab called Munch That. I've got all lists of reviews of sites, that, of places that I've gone to and eat. So I wouldn't say I'm a foodie in terms of the way... I don't fetishize over food in that regard, but I do go to cool restaurants. But I think maybe because I don't fetishize, fetish, fetishize, fetishize, fetish, or whatever. Because I'm not, because I'm not super over it. Because I'm not, you know, addicted to eating, or because I'm not um, an eating enthusiast or whatever it may be. I find it a lot easier to probably um, eat the same things every day and then kind of like fast as well. It's sort of like one of those things that kind of go hand in hand for me. Um, and yeah, it's been working amazing for me. Again, I've lost tons of weight because of it again most of the most of the reason why i've lost the weight is because of what i've been eating i'm very very sure of it because i think i've been working out the same if not more than i was previously no i think i've been I'm working out probably the same if not less than i was previously and i'm losing more weight because i'm just making sure i stick to my diet and then when it comes to the weekend i kind of go a bit crazy so i try and do this i try and do some usually until friday or thursday so i try and do it from sunday to thursday so i have like five days and then on the friday usually because i'm djing I'll tend to kind of go off the rails because I'm going to have a drink, I'm going to go out and that sort of malarkey. I don't really want to, you know, limit myself in what I'm going to have and all that stuff. So it's worked out pretty well for me. I'm, I'm loving it. And I really recommend if you're out there and you're really struggling with your weight or you want to, you want to, I think it's a good thing even to just manage your weight. If Forget losing. If you just want to manage and keep at the same level, because I think that's, what, that's the thing that I've really struggled with in the past. I lost a lot of weight when I first got into running. I think my smallest I got down to was like 180 80 pounds, which is like what, 13 stone, I think, right? Let me check that quickly here. Um, I think it's 13 stone units plus. But I remember when I got down to that weight, I think because, again, because I was so big before getting down to that weight, it was quite easy to then balloon back up again. I'm not sure people don't really talk about it too often, but I think when you're a big dude or a big person and you lose a lot of weight, it's fairly easy to put it back on again because, you know, again, you know where how to do it. You've done it before. Um, you have a suscept you probably susceptible to put in on more weight when you eat certain things so bread whatever it may be sugars uh, processed food it use it you probably have a tendency to put on the weight which is where i have sympathy for people that are overweight um especially the body positive people that speak online and stuff i have sympathy for it because i do believe that there are people who are genetically susceptible to putting on more weight than others right same you know that we've all seen it right um brothers and sisters or or two sisters in a family one's really skinny and one's a bit more a, a, a bit larger right like uh, let's look at serena and the venus Williams I'd imagine Serena Williams probably puts on more weight easy puts on weight easily than Venus does right and Venus is naturally of a slimmer person but I think because of that you have to be if you're Serena you have to be very conscious about what you eat and then it's really but it's also really easy for you to put on the weight because you're just you're just a bigger you're just a bigger person overall so yeah um the light the lightest I got down to was 13.2 stone which is 186 pounds 
And I find it really hard to maintain it at the time because, again, I think because I was dieting so hard to get down to the weight, I didn't really have a diet to kind of manage it. I think now when I get down to that kind of weight again, I'm looking to, I'm aiming to get to about 190. So I probably got about 30 pounds uh, or so to go um, by the end of the year. If I get down to one, when I get down to 190, if when I get down to 190, I think I'm going to continue doing this um, intermittent fasting thing. Um, be a bit more loose, whatever would I eat, but just can I keep that kind of structure and that will allow me to maintain my weight. So I'll be able to kind of hover around 190, 200, 190, 200, but not go over that kind of mark. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it's going so far. So far, yeah, two, 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 four, sixteen 16 stone at the moment. And then hopefully by the end of the year, no, hopefully by the end of the month, I'll be down to 220. So I'll be about 15 stone, which, is, which should be flipping awesome to get down to that weight. That'd be super, super cool. But yeah, so far, so good on that regard. What else has been happening with me? Oh, DJing a bunch. DJing this Friday again at Tap East for my night called Tap. So check that out. That'll be a lot of fun. And then playing again on Friday, on Saturday at a private house party somewhere in Dawson. For those of you that live in and around East London and want to come down, then I guess just, you know, send me a message on the old privates and I will let you know where that event is. But yeah, looking forward to that, man. It's, like, it's been a while since I played in the proper house party, but it's going to be a, we're going to set up a, an entire rig. We're going to have like a table. We've got speakers. We've got a mixer. Uh, we've got monitors and shit. So it's going to be a proper like, you know, system inside the house, which is going to be fucking awesome to do because, you know, something that you don't really tend to get to do a lot and you can kind of be a bit more free a bit more loose with your playlist and what you want to play and people are a little bit more open with what you're playing in general and they kind of want you to go a bit crazy so that'll be fucking awesome to do but yeah so this friday tapped and then um saturday for that night at the house party in dawson but this is tapped here at tap east in westford you can see it there on the screen it's friday the 10th of may come down if you if you want it come down if you want it and then on saturday like i said mentioned to you before reach out to me privately i'm more than happy to help you get into the house party anyway apart from that what else i want to talk about um we're talking about my united we're talking about my united a little bit um okay so manchester united of course we drew 1-1 against huddersfield a really terrible result for the most part um the i'm happy it's a, it was a terrible result don't get me wrong i thought you know we we played against the worst team in the league the team league the team is kind of they're gonna be they're gonna go down as the worst team in the league anyway as well especially um you know full of average players full of you know they switched managers mid-season manager kind of had a bit of a mental breakdown and left because of the pressure of the premier league the players haven't really stepped up to the mark they kind of survived a couple of times, but they couldn't do it this time. And generally, not a good quality side, you know, as we saw. But we allowed them to we allowed them to get back into the game. I think throughout, even though Man United scored first, a, a, a really well taken um, McTominay goal, probably the only person that played well in the entire match. Um, maybe McTominay and Mata probably would probably have held their heads up high. Maybe Herrera. We scored first, but you never really thought that we had the game under control. And I think Huddersfield kind of sensed that. And even though Huddersfield aren't a good team, I think they realised that we were there for the taking. And then in the second half, they kind of put the pressure on us. They started pressurising our centre-backs, especially in the likes of Ashley Young and, and Phil Jones, who are absolutely abject on the ball. Two players, again, who got new contracts. Phil Jones got a four-year deal. Crazy. Ashley Young got a one-year extension, even though he's super old. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, here it goes. So um, they, they kind of sniffed blood. They end up scoring a pretty well-taken goal on the counter. And they got close to even winning the game, right? So a team that's going to get relegated nearly beat us uh, to, in the penultimate game of the season. But the one thing I'm happy about is that so far, the the, um, the fallout of this defeat has been quite encouraging. People are pointing fingers at the right people. People have now identified things that a lot of United fans were talking about in the beginning, that it wasn't necessarily the manager's fault. I think some of the Mourinho in people were kind of getting, um, were being were being given a, it was a bit of a disservice to say people were Mourinho in. I think what they were saying was that be careful what you wish for because Mourinho isn't actually the problem here. He might be a bit dour. He was super negative. He was trying to get himself sacked towards the end anyway so he could get a payout. Like just, you know, a bit of a terrible guy towards the end of it. But I think by and large, we saw the issue wasn't really him and it was more so the way the club was structured and ran and the personalities that we were backing. I think the moment the club backed, the moment the club gave Martial the contract, the moment the, Marsh, the moment the club started negotiating Martial to get a contract extension, I think it was the moment Mourinho had to leave because um, the word was that he was trying to ship out Pogba and Martial because there were bad influences in the changing room. So I think the moment that thing stopped, I think the moment um, the club decided to opt for Martial instead of Mourinho, we knew his, car, his days were numbered or his card was marked. But what we can see now is that, you know, the same players are still affecting the way that we play. Pogba's, you know, um, uh, resistance to running around, Pogba's maybe 
ambitions to maybe play for a bigger club or maybe um, fight for top honours. It may be uh, disrupting the harmony of the club, of the team overall, the Gaia's contract situation and lack of form. You got Herrera, who's one of our best players. His contract's been able to been able to run down. Mata, another one, a player who's maybe over the hill, but someone we've been relying on a lot. Rashford's um, inconsistent form. Lukaku. There's so many players in that team who have genuine grievances with the way the club has run and how they've been viewed and how they've been treated. That it, I'm not surprised that those performances on the pitch are what they are, uh, for the most part. So, but I'm happy to see the backlash so far has been quite constructive you've got Gary Neville who's somebody that I've been a really frustrated with and annoyed with as a United fan who's kind of always stuck by managers and always kind of pointed a finger at foreign players and hasn't said anything bad about Ashley Young or, Lu- or Luke Shaw or Lingard or Martial he's been quick to point I mean Lingard sorry and but he's been quick to point a finger at people like Martial because he's an easy scapegoat to point a finger at but even he's starting to kind of realize that these players aren't that great. He's mentioned, I think, during the, during the commentary that there's not there's nothing about this team that he likes, right? He doesn't actually like the people that play for the side, right? Um, it, it's hard to like the team, how to love them. Um, they they're all kind of deplorable personalities. How they kind of conduct business, and you know the the fact that they decided to play for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when Mourinho left, and now all of a sudden they don't want to play anymore because you know they've kind of given up. Um, and he was also pointing a finger at Ed Woodward, which is a really interesting point, right? He said, at one point, he said, I think um, Martin Tyler mentioned something like, oh, it's, it's going to be a big summer for this guy as a pa- as a camera pan over to Woodward. And Gary Neville said, oh, yeah, um, hopefully he, he gets um, this summer right because he's, because he's already had seven, hasn't he? That's like, sort of like, you know, a backhanded compliment. So, And a lot of fans have been saying it. And I think so far we've got a protest actually happening in a couple of days. During the last game of the season against Cardiff, they're planning to protest at Old Trafford. I think during the 86 minute, they plan to have a mass walkout um, because I think that last game is going to be like a, a, a lap of honour. There's going to be a lap of honour so the players are going to go around the stadium and clap the fans and shit. So they're planning to have like a mass walkout in order to send a message to Woodward that we're not happy. I'm not sure if that's going to go as well as they think it's going to go down. I think Woodward's team will probably get wind of what's happening. And essentially what they'll do, they'll end up getting Woodward out of the stadium before the people walk out so he doesn't look embarrassed and has an egg on his face. I'm pretty sure that's what they'll end up doing. So I don't think that'll work. But I think as an optic, it'll be good to see that the Old Trafford half empty because it's never empty. It's always full. Um, So to see that stadium half empty during the lap of honour will send a clear message to the people that run the club that we're not happy now we need change. Hopefully that change comes this summer. Hopefully we have a structural change. I think more important than signings because already I'm hearing really concerning whispers that will be linked to people like you know Paolo de Bala and stuff like that. I don't want to, you know, that's the last thing we need. Uh, Hollywood signings. We need a structural change in the club. We need to uh, reconstruct our scouting system. Make sure we get a director of football, sporting director, that has a vision in place that includes Oligar Solskjaer and also doesn't include him if, if, if it goes wrong. We want to see like an actual template, an actual theme, an actual style of play that we can kind of get behind. And then hopefully with the right signings, we can go, get back to where we need to get to. But I think most United fans out there are very aware that it's going to take maybe maybe three seasons, maybe five to get back to competing uh, for the top four and competing for top honours. That's including everything. I'd say a five-year project. You want to get everything in place year one, year two. And then by that time, your signings, the signings that you have made year one, year two should be flourishing. And then you should be seeing who hasn't worked out and then be adding to it as you go along. The same template that worked at Liverpool, uh, worked at Man City, that kind of worked at Tottenham. And probably Una Emery is going to do the same thing too. You need to have that kind of five-year plan in place going forward. And again, if it doesn't work out for social, we I want to see a, a template in place that actually can say, okay, cool. We know we're going going forward a, a theme because, you know, jumping from Moyes to Van Gaal to Mourinho, you couldn't, you know, there's nothing linking those three guys except that they're football managers, right? Um, they all have different philosophies of playing. They have different styles of playing. They have different levels of, tac- of you know, tactical acumen. Um, they have different, f- um, f- they have different preferences of players that they want. It's all completely different. So hopefully going forward, we have like an actual theme and template that we can kind of uh, stick towards and that will be, be better going forward. But again, it's hard to kind of go up, talk about United and love them because we're shit, but you know, say la vie. Anyway, jump into topics because... The, uh, the talking about Man United is boring and I fucking hate them. Um, let's get into some topics that actually are exciting and do bring me some level of joy. Okay, number one. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Met Gala happened the other day, right? Is it the other day or yesterday? Yesterday. Um, Met Gala, Met Gala, Met Gala, Met Gala. And obviously, you know, we want to see the red carpet looks. We want to see what these celebrities are wearing, if they're on theme and shit. This year, the theme was camp. Notes on fashion. 
Um, let's get it up here. Duh, 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 duh. Met Gala. Everyone looked pretty cool, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. Every, everyone came. Everyone showed out. Everyone showed out. So, let's get it up here and talk about this whole thing. Ba, 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 ba. Show. This is from Vogue. An article from Vogue. Met Gala 2019. Everything you need to know. Uh, what is a Met Gala? The Costume Institute Gala at New York's Metropolitan, Met Metropolitan Museum of Arts is the biggest event on the fashion fundraising calendar. Founded by publishers, publicist Eleanor Lambert, the benefit was first held in 1948 to encourage donations from New York High Society. In the modern incarnation, the most famous faces from the realms of fashion, film, music and art come together to raise money for the Met's Costume Institute and celebrate the grand opening of the latest exhibition. The night is centred on the theme of the new exhibition with previous themes encompassing everything from heavenly bodies uh, manus maxia punk uh china and this year's exhibition is camp is is what is a uh, camp not some fashion since 1995 the the the, the the event's been chaired by Anna Wintour. Let's scroll down again. 40, 48% of the guest list comprised of actors, including Emily Blunt. La, 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 la. When is the Mets Cars app? It's Phil on this May 6. Uh, take place. What is the theme? The theme... Andrew Bowen, curator of the Costume Institute, has framed the exhibition around Susan Sontag's seminal 1950, 1964 essay, Notes on Camp, which posted uh, different ways in which the concept could be constructed. Bolton told Hamish Bowles that he found Sontag's writing so timely with what's going on currently, culturally and politically. Um, it felt it would have a lot of cultural resonance, said Bowles. Uh, the four musings of the Met Gala theme are here. Featuring some 20, 200 fine art ex objects and cons contents of exhibition trace, the origins of the subject from 17th century, specifically the court of Versailles, uh, to the present day. Basically, we go from sun kings to drag queens, American Vogue editor Anna Winter said at a press conference in February. A preview of the Johnny um, Dufort lens catalog indicated the looks from machina spring summer 2017 gucci's autumn winter 2016 and off-white's pre four edit feature within the walls of the map that major pedigree swan dress sits in the display too so that's the theme right camp so let's see some of the best looks that arrived at this show Ba -ba 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 -ba. arrivals are the best ones i like the arrivals because you get to see the stuff in motion the, the stuff where they're standing in front of all the press, uh, they're standing in the press junket. I'm not really a fan of because, again, you know, they're standing in front of the press junket. Who fucking cares? But the stuff where they're actually, you know, walking in their emotion, I'm a big fan of and I like to see. So let's get this up here. Let's get this off and let's show you what they're doing. Met Gala 2019 vibes. Is that the kind of thing that you'd like to go to? What's the most... I remember, I wonder what's the most FOMO event of the celebrity calendar that people are like really, you know, oh my God, I'd love to go to this kind of thing. Like, I don't really have any, to be honest. Um, most of the celebrity events look a bit dead to me for the most part. My God, it looks like it's actual fun. It looks like people have an actual good time for the most part. You know, let's take pictures in there. Oh, you can, but, you know, it's a little bit more private. People are a little bit on, not less on guard and all that malarkey and um, people look like they get fucked so that'd be quite fun um they search you quite thoroughly though i heard in there innit? you can't actually take anything in there i heard they search you like super thoroughly uh, i'd imagine people still take stuff in there but yeah anyway let's see here let's get this started let's get this screen bigger so number one let's check this out who's this so it's Lady Gaga arriving, looking wonderful as per usual. I thought I thought her free stage outfit uh, deconstruction as she walked up the stairs was fucking awesome. I fucking love that. I live for that. I think that whole entire show was great. So she's got the assistants there with the umbrellas. Nice to see. Anna Wintour, of course, there in her signature look. I like her dress too. Looks very nice. You got uh, that Cher, right? Yeah. Or Celine Dion. I've got which one it is. It's, which is which i don't know don't blame me lovely dressed here by this young lady this looks fucking beautiful um who was that who's that coming like this i forgot who came in like this with this egyptian sort of thing with, like, hoisted up who was that i forgot who it was but it looks fucking incredible uh you got jennifer lopez here and her husband hanging out doing the damn thing jennifer lopez looked fucking gorgeous to be fair she looked incredible incredible like stunning 
the diamonds, the hat, like just wow, 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 wow. Incredible, incredible. Um, I think um, is it A Rod right? Is it A Rod's husband or whatever? But um, I think Kid Sue is fairly, you know, fairly cool. I think for the dudes, it's always a bit difficult for the dudes in this sort of events because for the most part, you don't want to go too extravagant, too glammy glam because you know essentially you're gonna be you know hanging out, drinking, having a dance, talking to your boys at the event. You don't want to look too, you don't want to be too uncomfortable. Um, during the maybe during the fundraising event, you don't want to be too uncomfortable. And trust, not everyone gets changed for the after party. Some people just have the same uh, outfit on the entire time. So I get the I get the hesitancy for some of the dude to go over the top, but I would like a little bit more. Come on, man, try a bit more different. Try, you know, get get a bit more expressive. But I guess you know, if you're a developer's dude, you know, maybe letting her kind of go out and show out and be the fucking you know, um, the extravagant one in the couple is probably the best thing to do. And then you just, you know, have your little nice uh, pink uh, suit jacket on with a kind of velvet lapels kind of works out really well. And then you got here, Cardi B, obviously, like looking wonderful in her dress. I thought that looked really, really cool. Her assistants all decked out and Tom Brown was amazing too. In my opinion, I thought that looked fucking gorgeous. Of course, there's Cardi B on her phone, browsing the social media, getting off on people. I love it. She just start, started ranting about people just on the red carpet at an event like this. Right? It would be fucking incredible. <laughs> um, uh, this is, is that, is that why don't I recognize people anymore? Gwen Stefani, right? That's Gwen Stefani there looking amazing, bedazzled and awesome as she usually does. She never looks bad, really, for the most part. Kylie Jenner looking gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Uh, Jared Leto, you know, Doing what Jared Leto does, just being he's like the male version of Taylor Swift, not Taylor Swift, um, Katy Perry, isn't he? At these events, like he just you know, he just does the most, and you know, whatever, man. I think it's all Gucci. I'm not sure what the head thing is all about, but you know, let Jared Leto be Jared Leto. He's a bit, he's a bit of an eccentric in that regard. Fair enough. Um, you got you know, um, Nick Jonas and Jonas and uh, Chaprika, whatever lady woman is, and I forgot her name. I wonder if they're gonna do another wedding. Imagine someone, someone so she said they had another wedding on the catwalk. They renew their vows again. You know, they're always doing a fucking wedding. There. <laughs> but I like his suit though. I think he looks great. I think he's wearing I'm pretty sure he's wearing um what's his face? Um Kim Jones for Dior, right? That's what the Kim Jones for Dior did, where that sort of like got that kind of scarf that tucks in. I'm not sure what the shoes are, but I'm pretty sure the suit is Kim Jones by Dior. I'm pretty sure. Um go again here. We've got this model, I forgot her name as well. Uh, I don't know who this young lady is, but she looks fucking gorgeous. Love that outfit. It was really, really nice. Love, 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 love. Uh, you've got Tiffany Haddish here being taken down the stairs, carried by a young, handsome young gentleman. I'm pretty sure she was happy about that as well. Uh, another great look here. I'm not too, I'm not too sure on to that look of the latex. Not, not really for me. You got is it Jordan Dunn? Is it Jordan Dunn? Right, I think that's Jordan Dunn. She looks fucking incredible in that outfit. Wow. Looks like metal, isn't it? Fucking hell, that's awesome. Like a rose. Uh you've got here um Ez what's his name? Um Ezra something. He looks amazing. That makeup is so fucking peculiar. Wow. If you can't see the video, he's essentially got eyes covered all over his face, makeup wise, on his cheeks. His actual eyes, one in, two, in between his temple and two above that. So he's got one, two fucking hell. Seven eyes looks incredible everyone seems happy there on the red carpet the whole red carpet thing on at the met gala is a bit weird though no am i the only person that thinks that um essentially you're gonna go stand that red carpet event take pictures with celebrities who are going to a party it's a bit strange right so you're shouting out kim 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 over here over here picture of me just take a picture of you cool enjoy the party kim thank you i will it's like strange isn't it no standing in front of a event or of a party wishing people have a good party and you're standing on the outside it's a bit strange with that but i guess if you're a super fan of celebrities you'll do just about anything to go there and i'm sure some some of the people that are at this event have been invited by met gala to just you know bring an atmosphere and have people there cackling out front i'm not sure it's, or everyone there has actually traveled to go and attend it but i don't know man. i don't know if the i don't know i couldn't i could never do that sort of thing Again, I don't care for celebrities as much as some people do. Maybe that's the whole reason why. I guess if it's an interest of yours, similar to sports, right? Similar to some people that go out and watch maybe five-a-side football or something. It's the same same sort of thing. You don't know these people while you're watching them play football, right? I don't know. But I find it very, very weird to stand, to kind of stand on a red carpet behind, um, you know, behind gates, shouting at your favorite celebrities, hoping that they can see you and they can come over to you and take a picture. I think it's a bit weird. But maybe it's just me. Um, continue on here. 
Oh, she looks great. Is that? I don't know who that is actually. I'm not sure who that lady is, but she looks awesome. I like that guy's suit too. Um, double breasted, minus the collar on the shirt. Uh, suit with pinstripe with red boots. As you can see, there's a dog. Is that a sniffer dog for bombs or sniffer dog for drugs? That's the annoying bit of it. Let people have fun, man. Like, if they're going to take in a couple, you know, cheeky class eyes, let them enjoy themselves, man. Getting dressed up all that time and squeezing into corsets that probably don't fit you and shit. You should be able to, you know, have a little puff, puff, puff in the, in the fucking toilets if you want to. But I'm not sure if that's a bomb disposable dog. Off. It probably is a bomb disposable dog, right? Because there's, you know, there's tons of celebrities in there. There's no way that they're going to be able, you know, yeah, they're going to have to make sure that thing is covered from wall to wall because, you know, imagine imagine the insurance payout if any of those people pass away. You know, touch wood, that won't happen. But Jesus Christ, they can't risk that at all. Uh, you've got Tessa Thomas, I think her name is right, Tessa Thompson, right, the actress, the one from Westworld, and Blood Orange there, I'm not sure if they're dating, but they're, in, 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 they're together in a warm embrace, I like Blood Orange's suit, sort of like a baby blue lilac number with pink, with a yellow turtleneck and the headscarf, very nice colour combo, I'm not really fond of her outfit, to be completely honest, but I love her hair, whatever that's happened there is fucking awesome, like, um, she got up in a massive bob, ponytail thing with is that latex wrapped around it, it looks like dread, it looks like a massive dreadlocks but all latex that looks fucking incredible i love that she looks really cool there um i forgot her name something uh ross right um diana ross's daughter with uh Gigi. um Gigi looks fucking incredible in that in that uh, dress i think that's something we've uh say was it Gigi? i think that's Gigi Hadid, right? i'm pretty sure that is her um need to kind of state like how incredible she looks like you kind of forget how hot people are because you're so used to seeing them on social media. But she definitely has an 80s, 90s supermodel feel about her, doesn't she? Like, for the most part, I think she looks really cool in kind of clothes and walking down the runway. She looks probably, of all the celebrity models out there, quote-unquote, influ celebrity influencer models, I think she just looks the most natural on the runway. Like, you you think she, she fits on the runway. She looks like a, a model. Looks incredible. And, of course, you know, I forgot her name, something Ross, but she looks incredible for her age. In general, she's kept herself in very good nick. I'm not too sure about the frame that she's carrying all around her. It would have been nice if someone had been able to make a rig that she didn't have to hold it up over her head. But hey, uh, let her do her thing. It's all about a show, you know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What's going on here? Move a bit there. You got Adewayu, some that woman, that girl, the English girl, right? Ade, I forgot her name. You pronounce it. Um, I'm not sure who the lady is on the left. That might be um the Dutch model. I'm not sure who the one is on the right there either. Um, but all look really good there. Like the hat, of course, Katy Perry with the most. Cause she came in looking like a lampshade. Let her do her thing. Let her cook. Not for me, but it's all good. Again, nice little looks here. I like her dress as well. Nice and metal. Lena Dunham and her mate look terrible. Um, the, it's Christopher Kane, I'm assuming, right? That's why he's next to them. I'm assuming it's Christopher Kane. Um, it probably is. Custom Christopher McCain. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it is because I remember seeing this as a long t-shirt dress thing. So it was a pink one. Loner and rubberist. But yeah, Lena Dunham looks awful as per usual. But, you know, let her cook. Again, it's been a tough couple of years with her now. It's actually an interview with Leonard Dunham. Um, I think an uh, interview with him and... What's his face? Uh, who's interviewing him? What's his fucking face, man? Oh, he was on Joe Rogan recently. But she had an interview and she sat down. I might have to listen to it. Because she's had a tough couple of years, isn't it? She's thoroughly been ousted. Um, people people really, really dislike her. Even people on the left, even kind of work Twitter, hate her. She kind of, you know, I think when she did that whole thing, what was it? I think her one of her friends or somebody on her writing team accused somebody that she knows of sexual assault and she went out of her way to back her friend. Um, and then it got proven that what the girl accused the guy of was true. And, you know, she ended up with egg on her face. Um, of course, the OJ... Be o o OJ Beckham Jr. thing where she was saying that he wasn't paying her, her any attention. Or some shit she accused him of being a bit a misogynist. That was fucking funny as fuck. He didn't even know she existed. That was interesting. But yeah, um, she had an interesting couple of years. Um, she'd been run through the ringer. Uh, she's still standing. She, I think she's got a show coming out soon on HBO. So it'll be interesting to see how the media kind of, you know, how she got, how she's treated on the press run when she's promoting it. But yeah, it's been a tough couple of years for her overall. Um, but I'm definitely going to check out that podcast if I can find out the name. Who's the name of the guy she's interviewing? With? What's his name, man? Under the Skin Guy. What's his face? Under the Skin Podcast. Oh, I need to find out what his fucking name is. Sorry. What's his name? Under the Skin. 
podcast guy. I'm probably shouting the name now at me now, but I need to know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. Continue. Um, here we go. Oh, I love this. This looks fucking cool. I love that. What is that outfit? Is that another Tom Brown? Yeah, it looks fucking gorgeous. I love that. Wow. Sort of like a long trench coat blazer, would you say? With some lace and an amazing portrait on the side there with the shoes. That was incredible. Wow. These people out here on the side, these ladies on the side, they're not press, are they? What Are these the assistants of the people? Are they the event coordinators? I wonder who the people are on the left-hand side, how that kind of works out. Um, this outfit, Oh, that looks fucking awesome. I love that. That camp looks great. It looks like a kind of Pope sort of outfit, right? Oh, I like that too. You know, suit with the trail along the, the tail along the end of it. Another one too. Tail along the end of it. it looks fucking gorgeous. I'm sure some of these people, when they go to the event, they just help them out with the addresses and then just probably, what, hang out around the back? Are you allowed in with trainers and jeans and shit? Probably not, I'm assuming, right? I think Nicki Minaj's guy did come in in jeans though. Oh, again, looks great there. I love that outfit. Looking at the Empire State Building. America, go America, America. This is a great outfit too. Looks incredible. Even the assistant looks really good too. I like the assistant's outfit. Great outfit. I'm not really a fan of that to be honest. I'll take that one back. Oh, look at that. I'm a Barbie girl. She came through. Is that a, is that, is that, is that, is that a Porsche or Ferrari? I don't know what that is. That looks fucking incredible. She looks great who that lady is. It looks like, literally looks like a Barbie doll. I'm pretty sure that's Moschino, right? Fucking hell, that looks great. Another great outfit here too. These two look really nice. Like phoenixes. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Janelle Monet, of course, looks awesome. Hats on, hats on, hats. Maybe it's a play on people always thinking that she's always wearing too many hats, but she looks incredible. Wow, I love this. Half and half. That looks fucking great. Well done to her. She smashed it. Kim Kim Kardashian is probably the winner for me in terms of looks. Like, wet t-shirt look. That looks fucking incredible. Of course, Kanye came through in a clutch Dickies fit, but Kim looks fucking beautiful. Really, really nice. The makeup, the hair, the dress, the nails, like impeccable, impeccable, impeccable. Head to toe. Getting great outfit there. Again, I, I like this. I like, actually like his outfit too. He looks fucking awesome there with the fucking massive cross. Great outfit there. Oh, legs for days. I like that outfit with the stars on. It looks awesome. It reminds me of, that outfit reminds me of, the, do you remember those Vietnam boots? I think maybe the first collection on the runway, maybe the second collection. With the remember that collection with the massive uh bomber jackets, they had like these boots there, huge stacked up like sort of Elton John style boots with the stars across it. They'll, she would look awesome with those boots on with that dress. That would look really nice. But I like those gold heels in general. Of course, she looks fucking awesome. I forgot her name, but she looks fucking great as per usual. Um, Haley Bieber again looks quite nice, but maybe not for me. Uh, Peter Dundas looks amazing. I love his suit, man. He looks fucking aw- He usually looks awesome anyway. Peter Dunn looks so great. <sighs> yeah. Formerly of Pucci. The guy in the middle looks awesome too, I have to be honest, isn't it? It's that sequin pinstripe. Fucking hell. Anyway, loads of great outfits. Let's um let's maybe hide this and go to the another article that maybe breaks down some of the outfits. Uh theme smashers. This is from Vanity Fair, right? Vanity Fair highlighted some of the people that they thought they actually smashed the theme and did the best job overall. The campus of looks. Who did they? Who did they vote? Who did they vote here? Oh, they, they obviously included Harry Styles, who I was a big fan of. I think he looked really cool in his outfit too. Harry Styles, Janae Monet, Kim Kardashian, and Joe Leto. Um, number one they've got here is Joan Collins in Valentino. Uh, it's all right so far. I don't know. Not for me, personally. Harry Styles outfit in Gucci looks fucking awesome. I think that sheer top um, just peak, and then he's he's kind of shitty white trash. Tattoos peeking through looks really, really nice. It kind of looks like it was printed on the sheer. Um, again, it's a really good look. I think he really, really, really smashed it in that regard. Um, painted ne- fingernails too with rings on every finger. Apart from the thumbs, looks fucking incredible. I love that. Uh, maybe just not found the shoes or maybe the way it sits on him. Maybe in motion looks a bit better. But I think as an outfit, I like it. Um, and that was Billy Porter, right? In the blondes. Looking like, a, looking like an eagle. Um, and this is Janelle Monet in Christian, in Christian Seriana, the half and half outfit. I really like the look of that. Um, Cardi B and oh, that was Tom Brown actually. Okay, cool. I was wondering why the assistants wear Tom Brown and she was wearing something else. Of course, it was, all, it was all Tom Brown. It looked amazing. That whole entire outfit looked incredible. I was really a big fan of it. Uh, Jared Leto and Gucci, of course, not for me. 
Um, Ezra Miller in Burberry. Oh, that's Burberry. Wow, okay. Good to know. Uh, Burberry, um, what's that? Um, what's his name? Ricardo Tishi, right? I like the shoes the most, to be honest. I think for the entire outfit. I'm not really fond of the corset on top of the suit jacket, personally for me. Um, Kim Kardashian in custom Thierry Mugler. He's not even designing. But look how ridiculous her body looks in this outfit. It's just incredible, man. She absolutely smashed it. Sometimes I think she looks more real and more normal wearing really, like, really ridiculous outfits than she does wearing, like, you know, regular clothes. I think that's why her body starts to look a bit abnormal. But it's just incredible how also this, this outfit looks, man. Everything about it just really accentuates everything that's nice about her body. From the breasts to the waist, the hips, to the legs, like, wow. The naked, the, the nude high heels as well look amazing. Are they easy? I don't know if they're easy or something, but whew, gorgeous. Jordan Roof in uh, Iris Van Herpen. Again, another great outfit. I like that. They thought that she looked good. The campus outfits, really. Um, Jemima Kirk and Lennon Dunham and Christopher Kane. Nah, not for me. I think they look horrible, both of them. Uh, Lady Gaga in Brandon Maxwell look number three. <laughs> yeah. Brandon Maxwell look number four. She smashed it. Four looks, man. Three, four looks in one outfit. So good. Casey Musgroves and Jeremy Scott from Moschino. Yeah, that, that was awesome. She looks, she essentially looks like she came out of a fucking plastic wrap, man. She looks fucking gorgeous, man. Stunning, 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 stunning. Custom Moschino. Last couple ones. Ella Fanning and Mew Mew. Looks incredible, too. And Zadania in Tommy Hilfiger. She smashed it, I think. Um, I think she's been going for, what, is it three or years or two years? I really like the one she did last year, where she was sort of like, you know, in kind of an armor sort of garb. Look at someone that have Game of Thrones. I think she's done really well these last couple of Met Gullers. Anyway, Zadania, she really, she really knows what she's doing in that kind of um, LED Tom Ford. I think there was, a, there was like a wizard guy next to her. He had like a magic wand and he kind of flicked out at her and it kind of turned the lights on, which was awesome. Um, so, yeah. Everyone looked amazing for the most part. I think it was probably the strongest looks I've seen overall. I think maybe the past season looks were a little bit harder to kind of appropriate or to get on theme. But I think camp was maybe a little bit easy for people to kind of dial into. And overall, see some good looks, man. So, yeah, credit to all these celebrities, man. You guys smashed it. If you wanted my approval, if you were there, if these celebrities were hanging around waiting, oh, I wonder what Agassino thinks about my looks. Don't worry. I'm happy with you, man. I think you, I think you guys looked, did really well. You smashed it. <laughs> it was a really good meme of it on the internet on Twitter, so actually, and of everyone critiquing these celebrities' looks. But yeah, well done to them. They enjoyed themselves. They had a good time. What can you do? What else is on the list here? Ba 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 ba. They're trying to cancel Virgil, man. Oh, it's been a fucking weird time for Virgil this last couple of days, hasn't it? Yeah, everyone's trying to cancel him. So. Um, I think you guys might be aware that um, recently there was a couple of articles out there on the internet about Virgil's lack of diversity in his team, right? Try and get it up and see people are talking about it. Ba 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 ba. The what Cardi B album artist launches brand calling out Virgil? What the fuck? Okay, here we go. So um, let's get it on here, right, and talk about this because this is—I think this is a very peculiar time and something that is kind of I've kind of seen coming, you know, because I've been—I'm um, a big fan of the IDW um, Intellectual Dark Web Collective, loose um, fringe, a loosely a loose collective of intellectuals, um, podcasters, um, writers, authors, whatever you may call them who have kind of banded together in resistance to the, you know, to this kind of, you know, radical uh, left that are going, you know, haywire, trying to counsel everyone out there in society and, you know, providing a bit of an antidote to all the chaos that's out there at the moment, no pun intended. So I've kind of seen that this thing is going to, you know, again, it's going to permeate into current popular culture. You know, maybe we've seen it with the advent of Me Too and how that's going to, how that's going to be out of bounds and a bit psycho and crazy. Maybe we, we've seen it with the outer fringes, outer fringes of the SJW um, collective of people who have kind of made it their mission to cancel everyone who doesn't um, maybe agree with their worldview. Maybe we've seen it in the constant battles between the Antifa and, you know, and the far right in America. So we've seen it, right? Maybe um, Brexit is maybe another example. We've seen it permeate into different areas of the world, but we haven't really seen it maybe permeate into different sub subcultures, right? We saw it a little bit with Gamergate that kind of, you know, fell out for the most part. And people have kind of, you know, um, 
resorted back to civility and you know things have kind of um, readjusted or got back to some kind of normality i've not seen some people online complaining about more combat getting a bit too woke but for the most part things have kind of leveled out but we haven't really seen it kind of permeate through to streetwear for the most part it's been a bit left out there fashion hasn't really um bucked into that trend um even dolce gabbana you know i think if dolce gabbana were if those Gabbana were the Russo brothers and they said what they said about Chinese culture and they did what they did and I think they would have got cancelled more I think in general fashion was able to kind of they were able to bounce back and sort of haven't really had any kind of it doesn't feel like they've suffered any kind of long term de- damage from it maybe their brand has been damaged somewhat in the Asia for the most part but they've been okay here they did the whole blackface thing that really didn't stick with them either so for the most part brands have been able to bounce back but over the course of the over the course, over the course of time, if you've if you've been paying attention, you will notice that some of the people on the left who are kind of you know have it are hell bent on making sure that people get cancelled, and that you know whoever you know whoever they don't agree with, or whoever's doing something that they don't like gets chucked out, or you know it's, yeah just general cancelled and you want to ruin their lives. What you see is that they usually pick out somebody who you would never have guessed, right? A kind of like um. Usually a defenseless victim, usually somebody that's not very aware of what's currently going on, somebody that isn't kind of hip to the woke language, isn't necessarily, um, you know, keeping up to breath, keeping up to date with what's currently going on in terms of what people are debating about and what they're talking about, arguing for, in hope that they can catch them off guard, make them make an example of them, and kind of scare everyone into line. And what you've seen is what's been happening with Virgil, the same sort of kind of thing, right? They've kind of picked on somebody who maybe isn't the most culturally, I would say culturally, isn't the most politically aware, who isn't the most, who doesn't try to cater to what the general populace is kind of thinking, which has probably led to his success, right? The, the, act, the fact that he bucks trends and tries to go his own way, the fact that he tries to see the good in people instead of seeing the wrong in people, the fact that he's a generally a bit of an optimist and tries to, you know, um, uh, relay that message to his adoring fans. I think that it, it, it's no coincidence that he's been picked out as a guy to kind of go after. And they were quite clever in what they picked him out of because, you know, for more the things you would have thought he would have picked out of here. Okay, so... um jesus christ this is incredible so here we go right so there's a few articles here that i want to talk about um that kind of speak about it. so number one hype piece article that kind of gives a bit of an, a background on what the whole entire problem is and what people are complaining about again for me it's really really ridiculous and i don't really i think of all the things to kind of pillar virgil for it's weird because he probably got most he probably got less stick when he did a ralph Lauren thing right which i think in general is something that hasn't he hasn't necessarily really recovered from i think part of the reason why a lot of the hype beast comments people hate him i think for the most part because they're trolls but i think for the most of the reason why is because he came into the game with those ralph Lauren. uh 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 flannels right that he was selling for five hundred dollars i essentially picked up for thirty dollars and tried to you know um kind of um say it was an art project whatever it may be i think that kind of you know you only get a, a chance to make a first impression once i think that kind of fucked him over for the most part but i think he got more stick for this ridiculous thing than he did for the ralph Lauren flannels which really or the ralph Lauren rugby shirts really shows you how ridiculous some people are and if you're wondering, oh, what exactly are they complaining about? What what what, what did Virgil do this time? Um, is it association with Dinner and Connor? Is it the fact that he's associated with Asa Bari, who did they both did maybe some questionable things? No, it's none of that. It's to do with his lack of diversity, supposedly, in his workforce at Off White. Um, Virgil did made the mistake of posting um, their off season Christmas party on Instagram, which I saw briefly on his instagram stories thought nothing of it and then suddenly over 24 hours uh, people started getting hysterical and saying that he only employs white people like oh my god like really like for real this is the guy that you want to go after okay cool so um let's read the entire article uh let's see here oh my god they're going off on him so the entire article is on hype beast right update virgil abloh responds to criticism regarding off-white's lack of diversity update we've recently reached out to virgil and the designer's rep has provided the following quote my design team is diverse as the world is big. The video shown was an off-white dinner at the headquarters in the city of Milan, Italy. This party was to celebrate the hard work of the local Italian team. I remember, I think he put something along the lines of um, uh, Christmas party in quotation marks. And I'm sure if you guys have worked for, you know, startups or smaller brands, things are going so quickly, you know, especially if your brand is kind of on the ascendancy and, you know, you're getting more popular and more orders are coming in or, you know, just got more work on. Sometimes seasonal activities that you usually do, maybe company retreats, maybe holidays, maybe um, seasonal holidays don't necessarily get done on time. They're meant to get done because so, so many things are happening at once. So in an effort to kind of, you know, um, 
respect people's um, desire to have those occasions or those events because you know, some employees love them because it's a good way to bond, good way to let your hair down, drink on a company dime, on a company card, you know, just get fucked up. It's a good opportunity to eat some good food. Some companies like to have those things off season. Like I remember a company I worked for had their Christmas party in January, right? Some people like to have theirs in March just because it's so busy and you don't have the time to do it on Christmas because sometimes people go away and they go to different places to go visit family all over the world. The one time you get everyone in, in the office might be a time when, you know, not very, not the conventional time. So he decides to have a Christmas party in March or April, whatever it might be, for his uh, team to celebrate, you know, their achievements. Because again, in the next couple of months, they're all going to be fucking busy. It's going to be hectic in the office again. They're going to be running around for Fashion Week. So it's a great way to kind of make them say thank you to everybody. And again, if you know anything about Off-White and Virgil Abloh, the, the, the actual company is read by or manufactured or, product, or produced by the New Guards Group, a company based in Milan. For the most part, I'd imagine Milan isn't the most culturally diverse city in the world anyway. Uh, most of the people that work in New Guards Group probably come from ex- other fashion houses uh, in and around Milan or around Paris. So, they, you know, people are already working in the industry. Um, for the most part, the industry isn't as culturally diverse as it needs to be, which is why we have a Virgil, which is why he's, him being appointed to Louis Vuitton was such a big thing because the hope was him being appointed would be, then usher in loads of different talent. He'd be able to highlight different people. Look what he's done with the Es Bravado kid, the kid that does all the um, diamantes on, on the jeans and shit and edits them and does little kind of edits or whatever it may be and makes his own jackets. He's kind of put put him up into the front and have him do some of the jeans that he does at Off-White. So again, the hope was with Virgil kind of at the helm at Louis Vuitton, with Virgil um, kind of running his own fashion brand in Off-White, the hope was he'd maybe change the cultural conversation, right? Because essentially his uh, fashion show would be a lot more culturally diverse than maybe a Dolce Gabbana show, right? It would be a lot more white. It would be a less whitewashed than those shows. Not That's not a, a diss to those guys because that's that's the world that they live in. But the world that he lives in, he, sh he should be able to kind of uh, bring it to the forefront and have it on a runway. And for the most part, you see it, right? With the casting, uh, with the people that are on the runways, with the photographers he uses, with the models he uses, with the show models, the fit models. It's all very much under the guise of like, let me um, change the conversation. So he's trying his best in within to work within the system. But again, people are not happy. So it says additionally, an off-white rep says, when questioned about diversity, Virgil takes pride, pride in being African-American. The fact that he has to explain this is fucking nuts. He does, his design team is, is diverse and his practice has been built on making the art and design industry as inclusive community. Fair designers like Samuel Ross, Heron Preston, Love Vegas, by Tremaine and, and A-Side, um, uh, Everard Best, photographer, Fabian Montague, amongst many others have been given a platform via Off-White. That's true. You only have to look at his list of collaborators. If anything, he's done very well to kind of separate Off-White and Louis Vuitton. He's been very experimental. He's been very collaborative on the people he uses on Off-White and maybe a little bit more fashion-y with a capital F with Louis Vuitton. He still kind of does some really cool, interesting projects with like the uh, music activations that he done, right? Um, I forgot what they call. We did it with Benji B, kind of Benji B is a musical director for Louis Vuitton. But with the Off-White thing, you can't deny the stuff he's done with Nogue Vegas Ian, working with Heron Preston. Well, he basically um, gave Heron Preston his opportunity to um, have New Guards Group back him and produce his stuff. Like, it you, there's nothing that you can really you can't label lack of diversity or not being inclusive with Virgil Abloh. He's probably the worst person to kind of pin that kind of accusation, in my opinion. Um, he wishes to use this moment of being questioned to be a moment of reflection within the industry to showcase the talents behind their designs and entities and to push the design community forward. Virgil also responded, diversity. As fashion needs to know, Virgil Abloh is once again in hot water after defending after defending his Michael Jackson design of Louis Vuitton, which again I thought at the time was a maybe a little bit insensitive. But what I thought at the time was that not everyone was aware that this documentary was coming out. I think people have to be a little bit more sympathetic that not everybody is, is as, um, I don't know, and I don't know, culturally, not even culturally aware, is aware of these shows that are in production. I knew it because I fucking subscribed to the television subreddit. So I heard it spoken about on podcasts I listen to. But I don't know how many podcasts or cultural podcasts um, outside of maybe music stuff or maybe fashion and design stuff that Virgil listens to. And why should he be paying attention to all these other things when he's got so many things to do anyway? So I was aware of it. So I knew, you know, if I was maybe on his team, I would have said, hey, maybe you might want to um, put down the hole because this documentary is coming out and it might, you know, completely destroy um, Michael Jackson. 
because he had two things outcomes could happen number one the documentary could have come out and everyone could have been like you know what fuck that that documentary ain't real like we don't believe those guys or number two the documentary would come out and they could completely paint michael jackson into being a monster which it actually did now we're kind of seeing it kind of being questioned a lot more but the initial reaction was that michael jackson was a pedophile so i was a bit i was obviously aware that even though the show was great there was a lot of emotion behind it. I thought Blood Orange's performance was fucking incredible. I thought the set design was really good. He got Futura involved. He had that kid doing front flips, Kid Cudi, Octavian. Like, loads of amazing casting. I thought it was really well done. Maybe it's not as good as the first collection, but I thought it was a great show. I was under the impression that it wouldn't hit the shelves. I, I, wouldn't, I was pretty sure it wouldn't be sold, right? And, you know, as, as, as time progressed, he kind of got forced into cancelling it, right? He tried to defend it. He tried to say he was only focusing on his artistry, but over time... Um, you know the, um, the the social justice warriors out there uh, in an effort to kind of cancel Michael Jackson also cancel his collection fair okay chalk that up to an, an L you wasn't aware of it let's carry on but this diversity stuff is fucking bizarre Ablo's Instagram post showed various members of the off-white Italian design team Ablo was celebrating the talent of his t- staff describing the art directors as crazy talented crew of kids social media users were quick to point out the lack of employee diversity at off-white cool you wanna you want it's weird how you view things, right? When I saw what he was posting, I thought that was quite admirable that he was using his platform to highlight everybody that was at that show. And I'm pretty sure he tagged quite a lot of people that, that he was taking pictures of in the Instagram stories. Or he reposted some of the stuff that they were tagging him in. So he purposed he always uses his platform, maybe apart from when he was working with us at Mastered, to kind of retweet, reshare people that he kind of feels like should be getting some light too. He's always doing that, always, right? So I thought it was quite admirable that he would do that, right? He wasn't just posting pictures of what he'd done and how he designed the fucking interior and the chairs that he did. He was actually posting the people behind off white and like, hey, give these guys some love too. And if you know anything about the fashion industry, you know it's very small. You know, for the most part, everyone's worked everywhere right and people can need to kind of rely on that kind of hey give me a recognition someone can kind of maybe pass you around to another team you kind of get a move somewhere get another look in and those things matter it doesn't it doesn't seem like it does but it don't matter because you know the people who hire individuals who headhunt are watching these instagram stories so it's very good to do especially if you have an instagram profile and you upload your portfolio on there it's great that he's doing it but again some people see that as like i don't know what him highlighting the fact that he's only white people are there it's like and what and even if it is only white people working for him what are you meant to do now not hire white people like what ridiculous again so how far does the conversation go if he hires only white women of a certain age to work in his company then what he has to hire more dudes and get rid of the women and let's say it's fashion industry right let's say the fashion industry for the most part representation wise um you know female models get paid you know way more than male models do there's no there's no protest about that representation wise should he get in all dudes and then if someone argues against it you say well there's too many women represented in the in the fashion industry i want to give guys a little bit of a shine how would that go down it's like you can't win with these people man you can't win like what do they want do they want you just to like they want they want what they basically want is they want to run they want to run your company for you and which is what annoys me the most because i think if you have such a problem with the way virgil runs his company or the way some people are um representing fashion lack of diversity the one thing you can do you can't do that maybe with twitter or instagram or youtube because they've got a bit of a monolith sometimes you know some people would argue that oh the people that argue for free speech on youtube or for twitter should just make their own platform you can't it's too late now right the amount of um lo- the amount of due diligence terms and conditions um you know lawyer fees you'd have to do to start up something like a twitter nowadays was crazy right i think youtube has only just started making money so it's hard to kind of go out and kind of make your own platform, right? You kind of have to play within the rules. But I think with fashion, I think with design, for the most part, with products and commodities, you can essentially save up some money and just do it the way you want to do it. You could just start your own company and make it a rule that you just only hire black people, only hire people from a certain area, people from a certain age, people from only a certain socioeconomic background. You could do that if you want to and see how far you're going to get, right? There's like, um, didn't the, the a, a, a feminist group in the US do a certain thing, a similar thing with a coffee shop? It went out of business, um, unfortunately, but they tried to start a coffee shop where they were charging men 18% more because it reflected the 80% differences in wage, whatever it may be, right? Wage differences, the wage gap, right? It obviously didn't go well and it kind of went out of business, but they tried to do something. That's cool, right? Try and do something. Don't go and pick it outside Starbucks and implore them to uh, charge women less. Start your own coffee shop. That's what you should do. So instead of pointing fingers at Virgil, even if he is doing things wrong, which I don't think he is, make your own brand. That's what you should be doing instead of complaining. But again, I think it's probably easier to complain. Um, 
Despite a bevy of shots showing a room packed full of people, critics immediately singled out lack of black staff members. Widespread denunciation is rather uncommon for off-white CEO as Virgil's Abbott's work at CEO has revealed accolades of its inclusive influences. Progressive campaign imagery is again exactly that campaign imagery with the with the with the black kid, the little baby with the over with the kind of jumper, oversized like that's fucking beautiful. Like what the fuck? Energy people are weird. The disparagement has ever, has ever off. The disparagement has even spread to off white Instagram with users commenting on unrelated posts calling out the racially homogenous staff. Um, a rep of off white's PR declined to officially comment, asserting that off Virgil's off white story showed a mere fraction of the 156 design team. Check out the images below. It's like come on, man. Virgil's Instagram story last night showed a team of people that work behind the team. We noticed anything in particular? what that is a milan based um, it's a milan based fashion production company um that's made up of loads of people who have worked in the fashion industry for years and they all happen to be a certain color and creed there's nothing to real say here this is non-news the fashion industry is i don't know is maybe culturally behind the times it's not as woke as it needs to be cool but these guys are trying to do it they're trying to force their way in right the time when virgil and Kanye and those guys were standing outside Fashion Week wearing their um, those kind of ridiculous outfits with the briefcases and stuff. They were pillared all over the internet. People were taking a piss out of them, right? They, were, they weren't getting invited to shows. They were essentially gate crashing shows and trying to sneak in and trying to get into the industry and no one was giving them a shot. That was essentially what we were all trying to do as, as a culture, right? Even I, from the, you know, from where I am, way, 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 way out of the fucking inner circle. I was a big fashion fan. I was just, you know, obsessed with fashion, reading magazines, being on forums like Fashion Spot and all these malarkeys, uh, obsessive over fashion, but knowing that I couldn't really get in there. I wasn't included. I didn't feel like I was represented. And all of a sudden, these guys come around, right? Even though Kanye's first collections weren't that great, it was still great that he fucking smashed the door down because I knew um, the consequences or the people coming after him as he smashed that door down would be the ones kind of changing it. And look what's happened, right? He smashed the door down. Then comes a Virgil. Then comes a Samuel Ross. Then comes a Heron Preston. And all these other designers are kind of filtering through. Soon, you know, the new designers, the ages between 16 and 21 nowadays, kind of um, honing their crafts, making t-shirts. Guess what? Well, I wonder what level they'll be at in the future. Like, it's it's going to take time for things to change. But this is the way the industry is at the moment, right? But he's trying to change things. And again, like what, even if it is all white people, like I don't understand what this is. What do we want? We want to cancel everyone in fashion as white? Like it's bizarre, bizarre, bizarre to say the least. Again, people tweeting, not going to lie, I thought Virgil would have not, would have some black people working for him, but I'm not surprised. Why are you not surprised? You would have thought, so you would have gave him the, the benefit of doubt, but you're not surprised. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, fuck in hell. And again, how white is everybody in that table? Are they all from Italy? Are they? Are they? Are some of them from Bulgaria? Are some of them Romanian? Are some of them Asian? But they look white. Like how white? Like what is the difference? What is the this? What is the? What are you trying to like again? What's the point of this? Like honestly, I don't understand this. It's really, really bizarre. But I think it comes from most of the people that are essentially trying to cancel people. I think for the most part, people don't like Virgil. I think that's very evident. I think that like the fact that people are so quick to try to cancel him is evident that of the lack of love he has from in, in terms of you know the general population when I kind of cancel him they don't really like him as a person I think mostly it comes from that rugby flannel thing it might come from the early kind of interviews when he first started he came in he didn't come across he came because dis disingenuous I think he's gotten a little bit less disingenuous as time has progressed again just with experience it's all, all, all well and good that might be it and also, I just think it's the current state of affairs, right? Instead of trying to educate somebody, which is, again, I think it requires an, a massive amount of hubris, a massive amount of arrogance to think that you can tell somebody how to do things. But let's say it for once. Let's kind of, you know, agree to disagree. Instead of trying to educate somebody, instead of trying to enlighten them, instead of trying to bring them to your side or get them to agree with you by educating them on why it's important to maybe be a bit more culturally diverse and purposely hire people from different backgrounds, maybe have a quota. Instead of trying to make them understand that side, which is fucking ridiculous in the most part, you're trying to shame them into shame them into uh, obedience or extinction. That's what you're trying to do. Either they agree with you and fall in line. Or they don't agree with you. And again, me as a creative, why am I going to fucking curd or crumble or surrender to this mob mentality when I've done nothing wrong, right? You're taking one, it's like um, they're purposely focusing in on the party and ignoring all the collaborations you've done, ignoring the people that he uses for his imagery or on these, um, you know, resort shots. Like, did he just do a Louis Vuitton resort collection that I've previewed recently? Like, I don't know, featuring that guy that hangs around with Skepta and shit. Like, 
what the f- like what do you want like what do you want like again it's not about quotes not about whatever but what do you want you're focusing on the one thing only it's like come on man if you did a collection inspired by poland right and it happened to be all white people would they just focus on that and ignore everything else he did previously it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and it's not the same thing as a veteran man thing because the veteran man thing when they did they had the kind of backlash for the representation the thing that annoyed me about that was that it was pretty evident in the first stages you know maybe the first couple of seasons of, of veteran man kind of being popular within uh, the current culture within the you know the fashion street we're seeing it was very evident who was wearing it any any metropolis city you went out to it was asians and black people that were wearing veteran man. that was it no one else was wearing veteran man. i didn't see any white kids wearing it i only saw black people and asian people and even till this day, you, that's still people see you wear that same thing, right? That kind of massive biker jacket with all the patches all over it. I've seen people from Flatbush Zombies wear it. I saw Tiger wearing it. I saw maybe Chris Brown wear it. Like, I, that's the only people I see wearing that kind of stuff, right? So when they when they started doing their runway shows and it always was the same kind of person, right? Fairly white, Eastern European or Central European person. That got annoying because you're not reflecting the people that are wearing your brand. They obviously made amends. They started to include a bit more of a culturally diverse cast. And now essentially they're using an Instagram profile as a page, to, as an opportunity to kind of, you know, uh, showcase people around the world who are wearing their items. Awesome. You know, that was well done. But the virtual thing is so strange. Again, more tweets here. Me watching everyone come to the realization that Virgil is indeed not bringing diversity into the spaces he occupies. Luxury landscape because I warned y'all about this over a year ago. What are you talking about? Into the spaces, like... Again, I think if you have a problem with the way that he's operating in the space, why don't you try to get into space and do it your way? I remember there being a really good panel discussion that Virgil was on. I think it might have been during the Selfridges thing. I think it was Sam Ross. Some, 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 except some panel discussion. He was sitting down and some girl came up on to ask a question. It might have been, you know, um, a bit of a backhanded question where you're trying to set somebody up, trying to get them, kind of get them in a gotcha moment, asking about female representation in streetwear. And he said something along the lines of that, yeah, there's loads of brands out there, female-led streetwear. You know what I mean, maybe it isn't the customer base for it at the moment, but there's loads of women out there making streetwear clothes. And then anyway, if you want inclusion, just come up onto the stage. You kind of invite her just to kind of sit on a panel. There we go. There's inclusion. I've sorted it. That's the streetwear way to do things, right? You just sort things out. It's not, again, it's not something that you're doing consciously, not trying to um, limit the female voices out there, but, you know, when I, and that was a while ago. That might have been five, six years ago, that panel discussion, right? And streetwear has progressed, you know, it's become super popular in between that time, right? There's far more people involved in it nowadays, which is why you see kids as young as 15, 13 with their own cut and sew brands, right? It's gone fucking crazy. So imagine if a kid got up there and said, oh, there's no kids under 18 who are representing streetwear. Okay, cool. You start it. You make a t-shirt. You make a brand. You start a skate team. Straight away, uh, deck out your friends with, with, with the clothes that you make start building something that way and look and straight away you've you've kind of changed the conversation you can start those things now we don't we don't really we're not uh we're not um there's no monolith happening here there is no patriarchy in, in the thing that we do right now right it's all thing it's very democratic if you're the best person at the job you get the job um and luckily luckily in this kind of you know work era that we live in luckily Virgil's friends have come out to his defense because that's the thing that I've kind of you know, a bit annoyed about with when it came to Aaron Bondroff. Again, there might be details of the Aaron Bondroff story that I'm not aware of, but for the most part, Aaron Bondroff was the darling of streetwear and, and culture and art. And all of a sudden, he got accused of a couple of things and he got completely excommunicated. No, no, not one person, maybe apart from Lucian Smith, has kind of come out to his defense. Um, maybe that was because he was the first kind of victim of the Me Too era, right? He was kind of the first kind of streetwear victim that kind of got the backlash of it and he kind of, I don't know what's happened to him so far. Um, they took his name off the Moran Bondorov gallery. It's called Moran and Moran now. Like, he's going to completely excommunicate from everything and he's not involved in no wave. He's baby. Like, it's been completely ridiculous. But luckily for Virgil, his friends have kind of come out of, out of the woodwork and started backing him, which is great to see. I think there's an article here that sort of shows it from High Snobiety. Uh, let's get it up on here again it's a really ridiculous point of view even to be talking about this but let's see it here so Virgil's friends and fans come to Virgil Abloh's defense over the off-white apparent lack of diversity again bullshit um, topic in general but let's see what they're talking about here um, commentators are quick to point it out again we see it so what are they saying here this person Shelby Ivy Christel is saying Virgil is on IG showing images of all black creatives and talents he's worked with as counter to the criticism he's received for not having people of color on the off-white design team this feels like but I have black friends no it doesn't it's not the same it's not at all like that if you're saying he doesn't have diversity but he's showing you tons of people he's collaborated with, with off-white that is diversity 
if I if, if they're not on my t- like, what do you want? Like it's ridiculous. So if you had two people there that are black, they'll say it's not enough, right? It needs five. How many? How many is enough? Should it be half? Should it be ninety percent, eighty percent? Like it's absolutely an insane argument. Um, however, his friends came out. Uh, here, here we go. Um, one friend, Samuel Ross of um, a Cold War. Uh, says the following remember the time before the idea of black designs and afrofuturism entered pop culture and was deemed uh to be viable career route before the concept was presented to you this time was approximately five to seven years ago don't cave in on the pillar of our culture for likes and for uh pessimism are you saying virgil is responsible for that talking from experience pre-post concept of black designers designers cross field being seen viable dialogue to having commercial space have to operate in daily if you've worked in the field prior to 2012 you'll understand uh, the value in pop culture shifting since then of course because i know what I, I i know what happened when when fucking oswald boating was around right i know the things i heard i saw the writings the reviews the coded languages that were used about oswald boating back in the day um and oswald boating wasn't even doing um wasn't even trying to what would you say he wasn't playing into the hip-hop current culture the kind of you know the things that people don't like about but he wasn't even playing into that he was just providing his take on Savile Row tailoring right um he had African influence in there for some for for some in some hints of African influence in there in terms of the color palettes in terms of the cuts the patterns used like amazing amazing suits but for the most part he was playing he was playing by their rules and he still got pillared by the industry, still got absolutely flamed. And he was a, he was a fucking, you know, he was a talented, talented, he still is a talented tailor, right? Could make a suit with his eyes closed. Like could cut a jacket, like, you know what I mean? With his highest time behind his back, like amazing designer. And look how much stick he got. Uh, again, you think Virgil is solely responsible for that? It's talking. It's taken and will take hundreds of thousands of years for individuals to continue to shift this perspective and space. It's nowhere near achieved. This whole facet of design is in incubation. And Samuel Ross is another one that, that, that gets unnecessary stick. The kind of stick Samuel Ross gets on uh, what they call show studio panels. Why is it? Is it because he's black? Is it because the things that he does people think are simple? Is it because he, they think the clothes are not well made? Well, the proof is in the pudding, right? He has probably one of the best I think, in general, uh, takes on streetwear that exists on the runway. He's got investment coming out of his ears. He sells in, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of stores. He sells, stuff sells out all the time. He has a real connection to kids. He comes from a very intellectual, diverse background. His father was an artist. Like, There's loads of things in his, in his favor that would get him a little bit more good grace with the fashion press or fashion media or fashion students. But they completely hate him. And where does that come from? Uh, holding company, uh, satellite offices, senior design team versus general employee, parent company, local employment agencies, all cr- relative, unconsidered with Virgil's conversation. To break it down to the outside, his core, core team individuals is four to five PSCs. No need to drop names. Exactly. Just because you're... So again, what do they want? If you if you get investment from a company to keep your brand going, right? Again, these same black people that are pillaring him for what he's doing aren't buying what he's making, right? They're not fans of his brand. No problem. So they're not, they're not providing anything to the bottom dollar. They're not allowing him to continue uh, making his brand and hopefully furthering the conversation. So if he gets investment to try and hire more black faces from a, a predominantly white company, does he get cancelled too? Or is he allowed to take money from the white man? Or, 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 or can he not? Like, what's the rules here? That's, it just goes, it's just ridiculous how far they're going with this nonsense. Um, here's another screenshot. I think uh, who posted this? I think uh, Denim Tears posted this. A screenshot maybe from Samuel Ross from Virgil back in 2013, reaching out to Sam, saying hello, Sam. Recently came across your work and thought it was great. Do you have a portfolio at the moment? Showcase the full extent of your work. Talk to him, Virgil Donda. Um, this is Denim Ross's Denim Tears' post saying, "You know why Samuel Ross, who worked for Ye, who worked for V, who worked for A Side and I, wasn't at Off White Christmas party?" Same reason I wasn't. He was too busy walking through the fashion creative world to- world door that Kanye and Virgil drop kicked on the hinges um, in the name of the black poor genius that has existed since tribal times Africa till now in the Western white male patriarchy dominated world. What y'all want Virgil to do? 
trying to snipe all white people out of fashion industry so i said exactly or do you want him to operate with humanity and hire create the best people from all cultures and communities to push the creative world forward so before pointing a finger and thinking about who you have what what you have done to for empowerment any minority community that is lacking protection for your life ever anyone can preach from the vapid ivory tower that is internet but it takes a real one to hit the streets help others without broadcasting it for validation y'all should try and again that's the hardest part that's the thing that people miss why don't you go out there and do it yourself? You Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, it's probably hard to go out there and create your own version of it. Oh, there's too many white faces on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. Probably it will take a, a big effort, a huge undertaking, a huge financial um, sacrifice for you to go out there and make your own version of those things. But you can start your own publishing company. You can start your own product placement company. You can start your own marketing agency, your own um, consultancy, your own DJ representative agency, your own brand partnership your own radio station whatever it may be you can start these things right now and further your own message going forward but they don't want to do that they want to cancel one voice and what who are you going to replace them with who are you going to replace them with this dead guy here right you're going to replace him with this fucking dullad this guy that's got a shirt called off black like you're going to is that you're going to replace virgil with this guy cardi b i'm out he launches a brand calling out virgil's silence on diversity off black is that what you're doing right off black t-shirt fuck off flipping hell these guys are numpties man numpties the ones that they want to pick on to fucking further their messages so absurd anyway continue on here another picture meanwhile in a sneaker year as worn by my friend frank ocean he's dropped this year was designed by an asian woman my friend uh cactus um this woman from cactus plant flight flea market to my limited knowledge her and yoon ambush are some of the first non-athlete asian women can't forget carmen sakai to ever have a sneaker deal i could be wrong my point is do you care where is the article on this or the outcry celebration on this and ah there is none why because it's not the trendy topic of the week so if you want to diversify something start by celebrating female achievement females of any color women is it women have it the hardest in the, every field from the creative to the corporate boardroom from the first world to the third world more of the story support everyone not just what is on trend and call out or, or call, to call out or celebrate uh balance out cover over nepotism in any direction but what do i know and no one does it no one's really doing it and there we go diversity is right there look at that entire front row look at the people cheering in the background is that bafik i don't know who that is but look at that look how amped everyone else is there look at this so what do you want what do you want what do you want again it's good to see all these friends coming out and supporting him because i think we don't get much of that nowadays in the social media work era everyone's a bit shy and doesn't want to um step out there and talk about how their friends come you know help them out and stuff and back up their friends when they're getting pillared or being mobbed um again this will pass another email here from leighton talking about his virtual chat to work on the off-white on the sorry on the users campaign uh this person says, I know there's hate for Virgil for what's perceived of him not supporting black kids or empowering them off white, but just know he pushed a country kid from South Carolina indirectly to be a better designer and gave him visibility and hope with one email. Um and yeah, loads of people just out there reaching out and talking about how much he's helped them. The symbolism alone for a guy like him to be doing what he's doing should be enough for us to celebrate. That's what I said. Even if he doesn't hire him, just him doing it is enough to be like, oh yeah, I can do that too. Um, I say this without any bias, just with information. I've worked with him, met him two to three times briefly, and he has done enough for our, all us black people in the creative space already, indirectly. Loads of people coming out and supporting him, which is good to see. Anyone who thinks Virgil and his enterprise lacks diversity needs a needs dictionary in Braille again just great stuff to see overall happy to see everyone kind of you know you know bucking the trend and not kind of caving into mob mentality and saying you know this enough is enough with this mob mentality shit man target the actual people that actually need to get targeted not people that are actually doing god's work out here man and trying to further the conversation it's just fucking ridiculous and again if you don't think he's um doing enough for black society or black entrepreneurs or black creatives go out there and start your own thing don't point fingers and you know from your fucking as as uh, denim tear says from your um internet ivory tower and try and get people to do things the way you want them to be done do it yourself but what do i know what do i know anyway um enough about that 
that's an hour and something already speaking too much thank you so much for tuning into the Agassi no Zinga show this is episode number 190 for all things regarding moi check my website in the link below agassinozinga.com I have my DJ dates my DJ mixes which I've done a couple in the last few weeks I've got my blog on there which I need to update but check it out anyway Photograph, photography art archive and all that malarkey is on there too as always um, this podcast is brought to you by Audible so go to audible.com for slash Aggie to claim one free book, book credit and a 30 day free trial and I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another episode of the show peace out take care and love everybody